Okay, so the next activity, the next activity that we have here is activity number four, which is basically to toss two coins simultaneously ten times and record your observations in the form of the table as given below. So we have basically, the, for example, the number of times the two coins are tossed and then the number of times no heads come up, the number of times one head comes up, the number of times two heads comes, come, come up. So basically in this activity or activity activity number four, what we do, we toss two coins simultaneously. simultaneously and we will see what happens so when you toss two coins simultaneously of course you can observe it. a number of different things for example on the first coin you can have a, a head uh, basically on the first coin you can have a a head or a tails on a on a on a, on a Say on the second coin you can have on the heads or tails and then you can you can get all the different combinations of these two meaning that you can get a head with a head a head with a tail a tail with a head a tail with the tails so that's basically that is basically that there you would get basically four different combinations but um but then the table that has been introduced here is basically you want you want to basically put your observations in this table meaning that the number of times the two coins are tossed the number of times the two coins the two coins were tossed and then you have for example one different possibility would be number of times no head comes up. For example, the number of times no heads, no head comes up or no heads come comes up. And then you, you could have, for example, the number of times, the number of times, for example, one head comes up one head comes up and you can get all of these different basic situations out of the four different combinations meaning that you get on the first coin again you get you could get it you could have a tail you could have a heads or tails and the second coin you could have a, you could have a head or tails and then you could have all of these different uh, combinations of these two for example a head with a head you could have a head with a tail where basically the first uh, the first observation here is related to coin one the second observation is related to coin two and then you could have for example a tails with a head and you could have a tails with a with a tails so you could have all of these four different four combinations of, of of basically of the two and then uh, for example the number of times no heads comes up so no heads would be for example over here you have one head over here you have one head you have two heads here so that would be for example this case here or the number of times one head comes up would be these three over here or the number of times for example two heads comes up come 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 up comes up but the number of times the number of times two heads come up come up that would be only this one possibility over here except for these except for this one no one of these can be a can be a candidate or can be accepted as the answer and then you have basically the total number of the number of times that the two coins were tossed so for example you want to toss the coin the coins the two coins for example 10 times 
and then you can record your observations over here. Now, using the, the data that you have here, again, if I call this H, A, B, and C, you can calculate all of these fractions as, for example, the number of times no hit comes up, no hit comes up would be, uh, would be basically A, divided by the number of times, for example, the total number of times the two coins were tossed, which is, for example, H. So if I were to write this in plain English, this would be the number of times, the number of times, basically no heads, no heads comes up, or come up, no heads come up, divided by the number of times, divided by the number of times, I'm sorry, the number of times, um, basically the two coins were tossed. The two coins, two coins were tossed. So, for example, A divided by H would be the number of times, for example, no head comes up or no heads comes come come up, depending on how you want to treat that in grammatically in English. And then H would be the number of times that basically the two coins were tossed, were tossed. Or then you can also calculate all of these different different fractions like for example B to H for example which would be for example the number of times that one head comes up divided by the number of times that, that, that the two tone that the two coins were tossed. You can also calculate for example C divided by H which is the number of times that two heads comes comes up. The two heads come up and then divide by the number of times that the two coins were tossed. And you can calculate these two fractions. Now, um, now you can again do the same thing, meaning that you can increase the number of coin tosses and see what happens to these, to these fractions. Now you will find that, for example, that the more the number of that the, the more the number of tosses, the closer are the values of A, B, C to, for example, one of them gets closer to 0 0.25, one of them gets closer to 0 0.5, and one of them gets closer to 0 0.25. Now the value of these numbers are different because, as I mentioned, in all of these. Uh, ratios we are basically taking the ratio of two numbers and it, it's it's again important and uh, necessary to to basically pay attention to what happens here especially the considering the fact that um, we have um, considering the fact that we have some numbers provided by the book here uh, so, for example, A is in this in this case in this whole situation. For example, let's take A as the number of times no heads no heads come up, which is which would be A basically divided by the total number of times that the two, two that the two coins are tossed. A divided by H. Let's take B as for example the number of times one head comes up, which would be. Uh, b divided by b divided by h and the number of times for example c i can take c as lowercase c divided by h which is the number of times that two heads comes comes up two heads come comes up or two heads come up divided by the total number of times that you toss the two coins together simultaneously now in the book it's been basically it's been it's been told to us that the that the more that that that, that the more that you increase the the basically as you increase the number of coin tosses that then that the, the more that you increase the number of coin tosses 
uh, what happens here is that the that the closer the, the values of a b and c get closer and closer and closer to 0 0.25 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 0 0.5 and 0 0.25 and there is a reason for that the reason is that again as we if if you take a look at this situation i have two coins over here coin number one and coin number two coin number one has two possibilities heads and tails coin number two has the same two possibilities heads and tails so what can happen is that i can get a head with it with the head i can get it i mean in any in at, at any point in time that I toss the, co the, the, the two coins together, I, I don't, I can't get over this problem of switching C with T in coin and toss. I, I keep, I keep switching them unnecessarily. So I can get it, I can get it every time that I, that I toss the two coins together simultaneously, I could get a head with a head meaning that head for the first coin head for the second coin i could get a head and a tail meaning that the head for the first coin that a, a tails for the second coin i could get a tail and a head i could get a tail and a head meaning that the, meaning that the tail for the first coin head for the second coin and then i could get a tail with a tail or tails with tails now you please excuse my not using the words correctly i because that's not really that important here if i pronounce these right or if i um the important is the concept here to to get the concept otherwise you can you can you can you can you can assume that when i said tail it means tails when i said head it means heads and so on and so forth so what happens is that for example the number of times that no head comes up that would be basically uh that would be uh no head comes up that would be basically so over here i have a head over here i have a head over here i have a head and over here i have only i have no heads so that is that is only one case that is only one possible case out of these all out of these all four cases there is only one possible case where no head actually does exist in in in, in these combinations so so that would be only one case that that i mean that would be only there would there is only one case over here in which this could happen so I take this number as one. I take this number as one, and uh, over here I take this number as one, and uh, um, and you, I can and, and and I can basically divide that basically by the total number of uh, coin coin tosses which is let's let's imagine that this is 10 so again uh, for for the case b for the case b which is b divided by h is the number of times one head comes up so one head comes up would be one two and three uh, three of these cases so i can take that number three and divide it by 10 i would get three tenths which is well much 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 closer to 0 0.5 and over here again uh, the number of times that two heads come that the two heads come up so that's only basically one possible case over here only there is only one way that this can happen now for example in this case there were there were basically three ways that this could happen right meaning that no head one head comes up this can happen in three different ways meaning that if this happens or this happens or this happens then that means that this has happened right 
So there are three different ways that this can happen. So I write three over here and then divided by the total number of ton uh, by the total number of coin tosses. And then over here, the last one over here, I'm saying that I'm what I want to calculate is the number of times that the number of times that uh, the two head that the two heads comes up come come up. So two two heads come up in how many ways can can that happen? It can happen only in one possible way, which is only this observation over here. So if it can happen in only one possible way, that is 1 divided, for example, by 10, which is very close to 0 0.25. Now you can see that this value is very close to 0 0.5. This is 3 tenths, which is the same thing as 0 0.3. This is 0 0.1. And this is 0 0.1. So now as, as, I, as I increase the number of coin tosses here, what happens is that this, this value gets larger and larger and larger and, and tends towards 0 0.25. This value gets larger and larger and tends towards 0 0.5. And this value gets larger and larger and tends towards 0 0.25. And that's, and that's basically and that you can call basically the the probability of for example this event happening this you can call the probability of this event happening and this you can call the, the probability of this event happening but of course we will state this formally as we get into the into very shortly we will we will we will state this formally as well okay Okay, so now, <clears throat> so so then basically in activity number one, now basically this activity is done, and so in activity number one, each toss each toss of a coin is called a trial. So that means that uh, basically in activity number one, where we were tossing a coin, for example, ten times or twenty times, and then we got basically heads and tails and then we got uh, we got basically h divided by a or t divided by a and each of these basically numbers were merging towards each of these numbers were was tending towards 0 0.5 so you need to understand the, the terminology here so each uh, each uh, toss of the coin every time that you that, that you toss that, that, that you toss the coin that is called a trial that is called a trial so every toss of the coin is called a trial now similarly in activity 3 which was basically i think that was the one that where we where we were basically tossing two coins simultaneously or we were uh, we were throw, we were throwing a dice for example 20 times and, and 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 noting down the number of times the numbers one through six basically was were showing up so in that activity two each time that you that you throw the dice that is called a trial okay now there is something here that I want you to pay attention to and that is um, so similarly in activity 3 each throw of dice is, is a trial and each simultaneous throw simultaneous toss of two coins in activity 4 is called a trial so, so each of these is called a trial and then over here, down here, what we had was that you saw that. Um, now let me continue with this. We will get to that. So a trial is basically an action which results in one or several outcomes. So a trial is basically an action that results in one or several outcomes, meaning that 
So to, to define what the trial is, so to define what the trial is, a trial is a trial is an is an action is an action which results in which results in one one or several or several outcomes the possible outcomes in activity one were heads or tails whereas in activity activity three the possible outcomes were one two three four five and six so the possible outcomes in each of those activities of course were different um, but uh, any trial is is an action which results in one or several outcomes now in activity one in activity one the getting of a head or in a particular throw is an event with outcome head and similarly getting a tail in is an event with with outcome tail so this is also this is also important so activity number one was basically the one where we had uh, is the one where we had basically a coin I think this one and we were throwing that coin for example 10 times 20 times and then we said that we could we could basically increase the number of coin tosses and so in this activity or in this situation um, in this situation basically the getting of a head in a particular throw so in the getting so in I could say in activity one in activity in activity one so the getting of a head the getting of a head um, in a particular throw in a particular in a particular throw is an event with outcome head is an event with outcome with outcome head so so basically in activity number one when you when you toss the coin so if you get if you get a head or if you get heads basically in a particular throw that 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 that, that, that basically the getting of the head in a particular throw that you could call it an event with with outcome head and also in the same activity in the same activity getting tails getting tails getting tails is an event basically of course then again in a particular throw in a, in a particular throw is an event is an event with outcome tail with outcome tails so again in the same activity getting tails in in a particular throw would be called an event with outcome tails so that means that when you throw a coin you could basically two events could could happen the two events that could happen would be an event with outcome head or it could be an event with outcome tails so that's basically this is also a part of the terminology and definition that you need to understand so
Now if our experiment was to throw a dice for getting an even number, then the event would consist of three outcomes, namely two, four, and six. So let me go up there. So it says that in, in our experiment, if our experiment was to throw the dice for, now suppose that we, 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 we are, the experiment that we are doing is, is we are throwing a dice. We are throwing a dice, uh, for getting an even number. For getting an, getting an even number. So if that's the case, then the event would consist of three outcomes, namely two, four, and six. So then the event would, then the event would, would consist of, would consist of three outcomes, three outcomes, two, four, and six and so an event for an experiment is the collection of some outcomes of the experiment so based on this you can you can understand that so an event an event for an experiment for an experiment is the collection of some outcomes is the collection of of some outcomes is the collection of some outcomes mm, of the experiments of the experiment okay in class 10, in class 10, you will study a more formal definition of an event. So we will, we will of course go forward to the next chapter and we will talk about events over there as well. That we will do in the review that, that, that we'll do for the next chapter that, that, that we have basically that we will do next. So can you, can you now tell what the events are in activity four? So, the, for example, in activity four, what we had was the situation was that we were tossing two coins simultaneously and ten times and we were recording the observations. So now if I toss, if I toss two coins, two coins simultaneously, If I toss two coins simultaneously, the events are, or the events would be, the events would be, uh, basically, the events would be basically, the all the possible events would be, for example, a head and a head meaning that this comes from coin number one, this comes from coin number two. You could have a head and a tails. You could have a tails and a head. You could have a tails and a tails. These are all the, these are the, the events would be basically any of these four events. So, but, and, and the diff, and the, well, the, kind of the, 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 the not 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 the most formal definition but so an event for an experiment is the collection of some outcomes or or you could even say all the outcomes of the experience mm. now with this background let us now see what prob what probability is now, based on what we directly observe as the outcomes are of our trials, we find the experimental or empirical probability. So, so what that means is that here we have based on what we directly observe, 
based on what we directly observe directly observe as the outcomes of our trials as the outcomes are outcomes of our of our trials of our trials um, we find the experimental or empirical probability we find the experimental experimental or empirical empirical probability empirical probability probability so we have experimental or empirical probability what that means is that for example you toss a coin a thousand times and the the, the, the probability of for example getting a heads suppose that you get the probability of getting heads would be for example uh, let's say I don't know 500 out of out of the thousand times and the probability of getting a tails would be for example would be for example um, 500 times out of the thousand times meaning that you got or let's say for example 502 and 5 and 488 or 498 for example 498 and 502 for example which means that 498 plus 502 would be equal to thousand the total number of trials so you tried a thousand times 498 times you got heads 502 times you got tails and this basically this um, ratio or this fraction you call it the experimental or empirical probability because it's e experimental you have actually done the experiment and it is well empirical and that means that you and to to find this sort of probability you have to actually do the experiment so that is one thing um so so then how did i find this 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 experimental or empirical probability i i basically this number i can call it i can call this the number of trials the number of trials in which the event happened in which the event happened and this number over here I can describe it as the total number of triers the total the total number of the total number of triers so so then P of E or empirical probability p of e for example let's call it the probability of e uh, which is basically empirical empirical probability probability prob prob so empirical probability of an event e of an event of an event e or p of e happening of an event e happening of an event e happening is given by p of e which is the number of trials in which the event happened divided by the total number of trials. So in this chapter we shall be finding the empirical probability though we will write probability for convenience. So in this chapter what we will do is basically we will find what we will find is actually only the empirical probability 
but for the sake of convenience we will find from now on we, we refer to it as probability okay now now that we understand these basic concepts about probability we can go back and uh, to activity number two and and see what we can do over she, over there so let me let me write down all the information related to activity number two so activity number two what that was 15.4 So it seems that I need to start from activity number one because they are connected. Okay, so basically in activity number one, what we did was that we were actually we were simply so activity number one, activity number one, what we were doing over there, we were just simply tossing a coin. We're just simply tossing the coin and we toss the coin basically 10 times or or even we, we toss the coin uh, 10 times and we noted down the number of times a head or a tail was coming up basically came up and then we recorded our observations in a in a table meaning that for example the number of times the coin was tossed and then the number of times head came heads came up and the number of times basically tails tails came up and then uh, and then what we did moreover what we did what we did was that we wrote down the value of these fractions as basically the number of times head comes up and divided by the total number of times the the, the coin was tossed and also there was some other fraction which was basically the number of times the, the number of times basically tails came up divided by the total number of times the coin was tossed so this was a basic this was a basic situation that we had regarding tossing a coin right so we 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 wrote down we we tossed the coin for example for 10 times we reported all of the all of the all of the all of the outcomes and then we also we calculated the probability of heads and tails happening if I if I were to talk about it more uh, basically more using the, the definitions now toss and tossing the coin 20 times and in the same way record your observations and repeat the same experiment by increasing the number of the number of tosses and record the number of heads and tails we find that okay so then you can you can imagine that for example originally we tossed the coin 10 times but then you can then you can toss the coin a more number of times like 20 30 40 50 100 times and so on and so forth and then do the same thing over over and over again for your data or for the for the for your observations now what we did for the act for activity number two for activity number two what we did activity number two what we did was that what we did was that basically divide we divided the class into groups of two or three students divide the class into into groups of groups of two or three students 
and let the let a student in each group so so then basically you divide your 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 class into groups of two or three students meaning that for example that way for example you would get for example i don't know 10 groups you would get 10 groups and each group containing each group containing containing for example two or three students two or three students okay so, uh, so let's continue with activity number two i want to go at least all the way down to activity number two and then we will have a because we are going to need and first of all we are going to need to understand these activities what each of those basically what we did with in each of those activities and then based on that we will understand the concept and that's actually very important for understanding the con otherwise you would not understand the concept in any other way so we divided the class into groups of two or three students meaning that meaning that we got for example let's say 10 groups and each group containing for example two or, th two or three students and let a student in each group toss a coin 15 times then each student each student tosses the coin tosses the coin the coin 15 times or any number of times for that matter but you need to understand the concept here or basically what is generally being done so each student tosses the coin 15 times or 20 times or 25 times but then but then for example but then each student should probably toss the coin the exact number of times as the other students in in each of the groups so Another student in each group should record the observations regarding heads or heads and tails. So that means that now we have in, in this group, for example, we, where we have basically two or three students. One student is, uh, one student is basically tossing a coin 15 times. Then the other student, for example, the other student is is uh, basically records records the results records the results and okay so now another student in each group should record the observations regarding heads or tails note that the coins of the same denomination should be used in all of the groups so again we are assuming that all of the coins that we are using in all of these experiments used by all of the students across all the groups are we are assuming that we are using the coins of the same denomination and we are actually assuming that all of the all of the coins are having the exact same characteristics as far as the weight is concerned as far as everything about the coin every aspect and property of the coin we are assuming that they are the same otherwise we wouldn't be able to basically we could not basically put the data we, we would not be allowed to put the data related to uh, related to all of the experiments together since we are assuming that we are basically one single experiment is is is, is being performed then of course then we can put the data together so so that is that now based on this based on what's going on here so we are assuming for it that for example each group contains two student two basically two uh, two students so these two students in in each group one of them is basically tossing the coin 
15 times the other one is recording the results so that's basically the situation here now they, then based on these results what we are doing based on these results so these are all important of course yeah, I need to come back probably to this link over and over again so let me make a note of this and keep this so this is important and also this one this thing is also important so this these activities start from here and then above that we don't really need any of any of these things over here so let's let me clear this up and then based on this uh, what i'm doing is that i'm i'm creating a table based on the activity 2 i am creating a table something like this so the table is basically is contains all of these all of these uh, what is this all of these groups that means that you have basically it means that you have group one group two three and number of heads number of tails and then let me add, draw the table like this so this is That's that that I call basically group and then I have number of heads so I have number of heads and then I have number of number of tails <clears throat> and I have number of tails and I have the cumulative number of heads divided by the total number of times the coin is cost. The coin is is tossed. I'm sorry. Let me put this into two groups like this, and then I have a basically a fraction over here that says cumulative number of heads. Cumulative number of heads divided by the total number of times the, the coin is tossed total number of times the coin the coin is tossed and that uh, basically I can can draw a line over here and over here I can have the same number of the same type of thing which would be cumulative number of tails cumulative number of tails divided by the total number of total number of times the coin the coin is tossed So I call this column, column number one, column number two, three, four, and five. Okay. <clears throat> and so I have, for example, let's say one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth groups. And then I have, for example, then the total number of the number of heads and the number of tails here. And here I'm assuming that, for example, if I have one group, so then the, the coin is, is the, the coin is tossed, for example, 15 times. So there I get, for example, 3 and 12, 3 plus 12 is equal to 15. If I have basically, <coughs> if I have two groups, 2 times 15 would be 30 times. So, oh, I'm sorry, no, 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 no. That's not the number of groups, but the, but that is the group number. The number of groups and the group number are, of course, two different things. This is group one, this is group two, group three and group four, and they are working parallelly, right? 
meaning that each group is actually what what they're doing they're they're tossing 15 this group is tossing 15 coins this group is tossing 15 coins and so on and so forth so for example over here we've gotten a 7 and an 8 over here we've gotten a 7 and an 8 and so on and so forth and then over here we have the cumulative number of heads so the cumulative number of heads for example for this group would be since this is the first group so i have basically the number of heads would be for example three and the total number of times the coin is tossed is 15 times of course that's 3 plus 12 which is 15 times that's 3 15 now when it comes to the other fraction <coughs> when it comes to the other fraction that would be for example that the cumulative number of tails which is basically only this number over here 12 divided by 15 which is the total number of times the coin is tossed now when it comes to the when it comes to the second uh, to the second uh, the second basically the second uh, row over here related to group number two for group number two i have this i have this basically i have the the results of group one which is three and fifteen and you have to add to that the results of group two as well so in group two we have tossed the coin another fifteen times and we have the, the the additional number of heads that we have gotten was seven so 3 plus 7 which is the same thing as which is the same thing as for example 10 divided by 30 right and over here again the same story so you have for example that the results of this group which is 12 15 and you have another 15 times that that the coin has been tossed by group number two and then the the, the additional number of tails that you've gotten for group number two is eight so that's 12 plus eight which is equal to 20 divided by 30 and then for example for group number three what you have is basically this fraction over here which is 10 divided by 30 and then you have tossed the coin another 15 times by group by group number three and the, the additional number of heads that you've gotten that you've gotten related to group number three was seven so that's 17 to for example 45 and again the same thing happens over here again what happens is for example you get for example 20 30 heads, which is which is the result over here all the way up to group number two and then we toss the coin another 15 times and we toss the coin another 15 times and the number of tails that I additionally got from group number 3 was 8 so that's 28 divided by for example 45 and you can just keep going keep going and so on and so forth and so that's basically why these are called cumulative meaning that you they, they just get accumulated over time as you as you basically add more groups to the to the groups that are working parallel together in order to get the results so then what what if you keep doing the same thing over here what you will observe is that what you will observe is that basically the is that the total number of tosses of the coin as the total number of tosses of the coin increases the value of the fractions in column four and five come nearer and nearer to 0 0.5 so over here for example you have 17 to 45 over here you have 28 to 72 45 so then uh, since we are tossing just a single coin and uh, what you will observe is that as you as the total number of tosses of the coin uh, 
as the total number of number of tosses of the coin of the coin increases increases the value of the fractions the value of the of the of the fractions in columns in columns four and five four and five come nearer and nearer to zero point five to zero point five okay so so that is basically situation basically that is activity number two activity number two now there is another activity now i don't really remember where how we got here to calculate a couple of things okay okay of course there is not much to, to cover here but we have another two activities to cover here and then we will um, uh, we will go and then we will do the calculations but I will end this video here and then we will continue this in the next video I'll see you in the next video